in 2023, Hanover will celebrate 300 years as a parish. On November 23, 2023, the parish of Hanover in Jamaica will mark 300 years of existence as a parish. Hanover was formed in 1723 when a small but influential group of residents from Lucy, which was then geographically the north side of the parish of Westmoreland, sought to have the area made into a separate parish. The reason which was given was to facilitate the ease of the inhabitants. Prior to that, the residents had signed a petition complaining about the expense and inconvenience that they incurred, for example, having to travel up to 50 miles to pay taxes. This group of decision makers who formed Hanover was made up of people who owned estates, wharves, and storehouses in the vicinity of the Lucy Harbour. These were persons who were considered powerful enough to initiate change from within to convince the House of Assembly and Council in the capital that separate representation was needed for them. On November 2, 1723, a bill for dividing the parish of Westmoreland into two distinct parishes for the ease of the inhabitants was read for the first time in the House of Assembly in Spanish Town, and on November 6, the bill was passed. Having received the agreement of the governor, the new parish came into being and Hanover secured a political representation in the island's House of Assembly. The new parish, Hanover, was bounded by the sea to the north and to the west, while to the east and northeast was the parish of St. James, with the Great River providing a natural boundary. The southern part of Hanover borders the parish of Westmoreland. Hanover holds the title of the second smallest parish in Jamaica after Kingston as it only has an area of 177 square miles or 458.43 square kilometers. The parish of Hanover also holds the distinction of being the second rainiest parish in the country after Portland according to the Jamaica National Heritage Trust. Hanover's main towns include Green Island, Hopewell, Sandy Bay, Ramble, and its capital, Lucy. At first, the new parish of Hanover was to have been named Sophia after the mother of the king, George I, but the council in Jamaica overruled the assembly and chose the name Hanover after the German domain of the British royal family. The formation of the parish of Hanover in 1723 in Jamaica took place just four years prior to the death of King George I in 1727. In British history, George I is remembered as the king who spoke no English and as the last sovereign to be buried abroad in Hanover, in Germany, where he was born.
The founding fathers of Hanover are recorded as being Edward Prater, John Morant, Horton James, Richard Horton, and George Ellis, who were members of the plantocracy of Western Jamaica. The surnames Horton, James, and Ellis are the ones which are still popular surnames associated with Hanover. The establishment of Hanover was significant in several ways, according to historical records. The new parish now had the power to send its own two representatives to the House of Assembly in Spanish Town, which was Jamaica's capital at the time. George Ellis represented the parish for more than a decade from 1723 to 1733, while for 15 years from 1726 to 1741, members of the families of Horton or James or Horton James served as representatives. Author Margaret Curtin, who documented the story of Hanover, noted in her book that stability was given to the new parish as its inhabitants treated the matter of their representation in the island's assembly with the seriousness which it deserved. She also noted that there were, from time to time, a few elected members who neglected the service of the house and did not attend according to order and they were forthwith expelled and replaced. Over the years, during that period, Hanover was represented in the house by members of other old families in the area, such as the Buckners, Anglins, Beckfords, Briscoes, Gales, Blagroves, Dawes, Clarks, Rhodes, Witters, and the Quarrels. In addition to its powers and responsibilities, the new parish of Hanover now had its own territorial army, the Hanover Regiment, which was compulsory for all white males to join. By military law, they were compelled to attend a drill once a month and field inspection once each quarter. Nerish Hawthorne and I'm a Hanoverian and I am very passionate about my parish and the way it will develop. We are coming up to 300 years of being a parish and we are planning some celebrations. Hopefully we will have a wonderful, wonderful year and some of our plans and visions for the parish will come through. It might be foolish of me to say some of these things, but they are, I am well advanced in age, as you can see. And there are two things that I would like to see happen in the coming years, and in the near future, actually. I'm passionate about bamboo and how it can be utilized in the parish of Hanover. We have maybe more bamboo in Hanover than in any other parish. And bamboo is very versatile. What I would like to see happen in the very near future is we have two factories that are derelict that can be utilized, especially the one that was called a ball factory. I would like to see Hanover as not a forgotten child in the local economy who has contributed so much because tourism and the IT sector, the, um, the BPO sector has been driving this economy and they are, most of them are in Hanover and St. James where the workers are predominantly from Hanover. But I want to see Hanoverians living in, uh, working and living 
in a condition that is befitting. The other thing I would like to see happen and very, very near future is the development of Fort Charlotte. Over the years, there have been so many plans, people coming and looking, money being granted, not being used. It is high time, high time that something be done for Fort Charlotte. Personally, for me, what I would like to see moving forward for this parish is to ensure that our young people are educated. And in addition to it being educated, to get training. So within the next five years, I see a different Hanover. I see a different Hanover that is on the, I would say, the periphery of greatness. Our young people will have access, they will have opportunities. Our older folks will have an opportunity to go back to school, get some additional training, help them lift themselves up. So that's my goal, that's my vision for the country. We are in the fourth industrial revolution and I want, I would want to see the upgrade the Kenneworth Trading Center, the Forest Center over there and in Akalba. In the east, they have a high school over there, um, Orchard, it's good, um, Nakalva over there, Polytech, Improving Polytech over there. Um, in the west, you have the Green Island and the um, Orange Bay and you have Rusty's here in Lucy. I do think after the high school, you have to have some institution to transition the youth into the working world. We are very short of entertainment areas, park, where our families can sit and relax. And there's the beautiful Watson Taylor Park. Some Development has taken place there recently, and that in itself shows the possibilities for Watson Taylor Park. But what about picnic areas, trees, benches, tables, where families can go and sit and have a picnic, hang out? Those things are needed, and so the development of Watson Taylor Park would be another Please like, share and subscribe and stay tuned for part 2 in the series of Hanover 300 Years a Parish.